Hi, I'm Denshi, and welcome to this comfy guide to Prosody, an XMPP server written in Lua. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your very own self-hosted XMPP server, provided you already have some kind of server or VPS running Linux, and a domain name with a couple of subdomains that we're going to look at later. So the most basic requirement here, apart from the server and whatnot, is some kind of understanding of what XMPP is and how it works. If you're still wondering about that, I actually have a video on my channel called OK, But What Is XMPP? where I do a presentation talking about all that. It's, in short, a messaging protocol that is very similar to email. In fact, XMPP usernames look just like emails. My username on XMPP is actually Alex at Denshi. Dot org, which is the same as my email. The next MPP server is identified by its main domain or its main virtual host, which in this case will be denshi.org. That's the one we're going to set up today. I have a couple of other domains I'm going to be using, so I have them listed over here. I'm going to be using denshi.org as my main server address, muc.denshi.org for multi-user chats, share.denshi.org for file sharing, proxy for proxy, and pubsub for publish subscribe. So these two you don't super duper have to worry about now. We're still going to set them up, but I'll explain them in more detail later. In short, when setting up an XMPP server, you need a subdomain for every single service, quote unquote, or module or component that runs on that server. In today's video, I've created the following subdomains for my server over here. I'm going to show you how to set those up. As you can see, I have them all set up over here pointing to a server. So denshi.moo.com, it's a funny address over there, is actually my primary server. And as you can see, denshi.org is pointing to it, pubs up the denshi.org is pointing to it, proxy is, is pointing to it, share is pointing to it, and muc is pointing to it. So you want to have all of these domains set up and functioning before you start installing installing Prosody and doing all that because it will make the whole process a lot easier. Now that we've talked about the domains and whatnot, let's actually get to the guide. So this text guide you see on the left over here will be linked in the description if you want to copy paste the commands. Honestly, a lot of installation here will just be copying and pasting commands or typing in some basic stuff. But yeah, with all that said, let's get started. The first section is installation. In today's video, I'm going to be installing Prosody to a Debian 12 server. And on Debian 11 and 12, there's actually a tool called ext repo, which supports the Prosody repository. All you have to do is run apt install ext repo. I actually already have it installed, so I won't have to install anything. And then all you got to do is run ext repo enable Prosody. Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to run it. But essentially, once you've run that command, you can run apt update and you can even put a dash y there and you'll notice that it will hit packages.prosody.im over here so this just makes sure that you do have the prosody package repository in debian now that you've enabled that we can just run apt install prosody now this isn't the only package we're going to need today that we're going to install a couple more but i'm going to go through those as we set everything up so you understand their purpose now pressing enter over here as you can see i can just install it and there you go it'll install lua it'll install everything it'll even enable the service by default so we're going to quickly go through and turn that off using systemd so we're going to run systemctl stop prosody to make sure that it's not running while we're working on it that would be pretty annoying all right, so moving on to configuration. All the configuration we're going to be doing today will be in Etsy, Prosody, Prosody.cfg.lua. So I'm going to be using my favorite text editor, Vim, to go through it. And if you do open up the file, as you can see, it is a Lua file with a bunch of configuration. Comments in Lua are double dashes, so we're going to be removing double dashes whenever we want to uncomment a section. The first thing you'll notice is this admins array over here. And as it says in the guide, you should probably have an admin on your server who can create users, who can create group chats, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to put some quotations over here and I'm going to create an admin called alex at denshi.org right over there. And if you want to have multiple ones, you can put a comma and put more quotations and put someone else like, I don't know, uh, let's say test at denshi.org or, or whatever works for you. So there we go. We got two basic users. All right. So scrolling down. You'll notice this modules enabled section. We're going to go through this later as well to make sure that everything's functioning. I'm just going to zoom out the screen so you guys can see it a little bit clearer. But essentially, this is a massive array that contains a bunch of different little modules that you can uncomment, uncomment, depending on what features you want on your server. Before we do that, we want to actually set up our server's main virtual host or domain. So I'm going to quickly make the text bigger over here so we can see things clearer again. And scrolling down all the way to the bottom, right? If you keep scrolling down, you'll eventually get to a section 
that says virtual host. So as you can see, it says virtual host local host over here. It also says virtual host example.com, but it doesn't really matter where you put this so long as you keep the components configuration below where it says virtual host and in capital case like this. So here you're gonna wanna put your server's primary domain. So in my case, that's gonna be denshi.org. So this means that the accounts on the server are gonna be named username at denshi.org. So like alex at denshi.org, test at denshi.org, whatever you have. So just make sure that you set this to the correct domain and obviously make sure you own a domain like that and that it points to this server. So with that set up, we can now go on and actually set up our database for the server. On a basic level, if you run the server like this without any further configuration, you'll be able to create users and do everything, but databases will be a little bit slow for it. You won't have a very performant way to transfer data, and especially when you start getting lots of chats and lots of logs, it'll be harder to keep track of those. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install PostgreSQL and set up PostgreSQL as your database for Prosody. So to do that, you wanna begin by running apt install PostgreSQL, just like that, and lua-dbi-postgresql. This is the library we're gonna need for compatibility. Now, just for reference, Prosody can work with MySQL and SQLite if you wanna use those. I think it supports even some other stuff. Uh, there's a whole article about it on the Prosody wiki, but I'm using PostgreSQL in today's video because it's the most ubiquitous and common one, especially with the other previous videos I've made on self-hosting. It's, it's very common. If you've been following my videos, you probably already have this installed on your system. So I'm gonna run apt install PostgreSQL just like that, and it's gonna start downloading it. I actually already have it installed, so it did pretty fast. Now that we have the Lua library and PostgreSQL, uh, we can actually go and create a user. So the most basic thing we wanna do is run su or switch user, and then Postgres. This is the user who has the permission to actually modify the databases in PostgreSQL. So now that we are the Postgres user, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see a little bit clearer. Uh, but essentially, what we wanna do is run the create user command and run it with dash dash PW prompt. So we're gonna be prompted for a password and add a user named Prosody. You can name this user anything you want, but for convenience, I'm just gonna name it Prosody. That's the default configuration in Prosody. So that's gonna be good. It's gonna ask you for a password. I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four. It does not really matter since this is an internal database. And as, unless you open that up to the public, the security of the passwords is not gonna be really that relevant. Anyways, now I'm actually gonna run PSQL and go into the PostgreSQL prompt. So I'm actually dealing with the databases now. And I'm gonna run create database Prosody. We're gonna name it Prosody and make the owner of it Prosody as well. And then obviously the semicolon to end our SQL statement. So pressing enter, uh, just like that, it will create the database. And in fact, if you run uh, backslash L and list the databases, you'll see we have a Postgres database just like that with UTF-8 encoding. Make sure the encoding is set correctly because sometimes that can have some problems. Just Google that if you're stuck, but make sure it's UTF-8 because that's what we need for Postgres. All right, so with that set up, we can type exit twice to exit the Postgres Google prompt and the user. And now we can go back into Etsy, Prosody, Prosody.cfg.lua. And there's actually a section for SQL under the storage part over here. There's actually a default configuration for PostgreSQL right here. So if we uncomment this, I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see a little clearer. If you uncomment this by removing the double dashes, I'm gonna format this a little bit better to make it look all nice and whatnot. But in short, it will ask you for your database, your username of the user on PostgreSQL and the password. Now, the only thing here that isn't like this with the configuration, we just did with the password. So I'm gonna change the password to one, two, three, four, which is what we set it to earlier. All right. so. That's the database taken care of. We don't ever have to touch that ever again. We're done with that. So I'm gonna write quit, or actually I'm just gonna write. And now we can move on to more stuff. Past this, right, we're gonna have to start dealing with modules in Prosody. So modules are essentially different little bits and pieces of the server we can enable and disable, depending on whether they're installed and whatnot. You can actually install extra modules too. So you'll notice that right under storage, there's actually something called archiving configuration, and it says archive expires after. Now this, is only gonna function if we enable a module called mod MAM. 
MAM stands for Message Archive Management, which is a feature in XMPP, which lets us actually keep the messages on the server as an archive. Now, there's some reasons you might not want this. By default, this is disabled in Prosody for you know people who don't want to keep their messages. But if you want to use this as like a reasonable chat system, then we're probably going to want to turn it on. So scrolling up over here to that big section we talked about earlier with all the modules. There you go, this one, this array called Modules Enabled. We're going to go down to where it says MAM. I think it says it... Um, or is it? There it is. MAM, Message Archive Management. And we're just going to uncomment it, just like that. So with that, we'll have enabled Message Archive Management. There's also a feature mentioned here called Carbons, uh, which automatically allows us to receive messages to all devices. But we don't have to worry about that because that's actually automatically enabled. The next thing is voice and video calling. If you already have a turn server on your server, then all you have to do is put the information for that in here, and it'll basically handle all the voice and video calling for you. If you don't have that, just watch my guide or follow the text guide that's available on comfy.guide on how to set up Coturn, which is a very simple turn server to install. But anyways, assuming you've already done all that and you already have some kind of shared secret, all you have to do is scroll down here to where it says turn external, uncomment it just like that. And once you've uncommented that, scrolling down all the way past the database and whatnot, you will find a section over here for audio and video call relay. And you can just uncomment the following lines to enable your turn server. So just put your turn server's domain over here. I'm gonna just put turn.dench.org, that's fine. And for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna put my actual security access token here. I'm just gonna put some random characters. This is not actually gonna work, but just random stuff to show you guys what it would look like if you would actually set it up. So yeah, just put your external secret over here and your voice and video call should work fine on your XMPB server. Anyways, the next thing you might wanna look at is enabling registration. Personally, I don't suggest this if you're running any kind of server you intend to use for your own personal use. If you do want to enable it, there's a bunch of guides online you can look at on how to have CAPTCHAs and like a reliable registration system. If you do want to enable it, all you got to do is create a global variable that's named allow underscore registration and set it equal to true. So with that, you will be able to let anybody who has access to your server register. So anybody with an XMPB client can actually type your server address in and create an account. For pretty obvious reasons, you shouldn't have this. By default, it's a default, so you can just delete the line and you won't have to worry about it. But yeah, in case you want it, you can have that. Speaking of registration and whatnot, for the purposes of um, completeness, for the purposes of meeting certain compliance checks, you might want to enable contact info. So if you copy paste, this information over here into your configuration, uh, you'll have an array called contact info where you can put an abuse contact and an admin contact just in case people wanna be able to contact you over any problems. So I'm just gonna put my address over here only for the purposes of showing you guys how to do it. But in short, for certain checks and certain uh, qualifications you might wanna get to your server, you actually have to provide this information. It's not required, obviously, but I'm just gonna do it for illustrative purposes over here. As you can see, I'm having both an XMPP and an email contact, just so you have the option. All right, so yeah, with that done, we can move on to the next step, which is dealing with something called components. So like I mentioned before, we have those uh, domains which represent different components we're gonna work on. The first one we're gonna use is multi-user chats. So this is a component which lets us create group chats on our server, which I'd say is a pretty important feature. So go into your Etsy prosody prosody.cfg.lua file and scrolling down all the way to where it says virtual host and where you put your domain under the virtual host. Make sure you're putting these under the virtual host line. You'll have these lines for components. The first one is the multi-user chat one. So I'm just gonna uncomment the line that says component with a capital C. And as you can see, it says component, it's got a domain name or actually a subdomain and MUC, which is the module it wants to use. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using muc.nenshi.org as my domain. And if you wanna be able to archive the chats in your group chats, you could actually uncomment this line that says modules enabled at muck MAM, which is a module which archives multi-user chats, just like the one we enabled earlier, MAM, but this one archives multi-user chats. So it's just a quality of life feature you probably want it. You can also restrict room creation to admins, which is probably something you want to do. So to do that under the component, make sure to put restrict underscore room underscore creation and set it equal to admin. That means only administrators will be able to create group chats on your server. So. Yeah, there you go. The next one is file sharing. So right under here, there's a file sharing component. We're just gonna uncomment that. 
And I'm gonna put my domain there, which is share.denshi.org. This module will let you download uh, and upload files on your server, which means you can share images, anything you basically want. You can have a HTTP file size limit, which I'd, I'd recommend because you probably wanna have some kind of limit on the size of the files you want. So HTTP underscore file underscore share underscore size underscore limit. You can put multiplications in here, so I'm gonna set it to 20 times 1024 times 1024, which is 20 maybe bytes, pretty reasonable size. You can also put an expiry date, which is HTTP underscore file underscore share underscore expire underscore after. And we can set that to say 60 times 60 times 24 times seven, which is one week, which means files actually get deleted off the server after one week. If you wanna make that less or more, that's up to you. I think if you set it to zero, it actually becomes infinite, but yeah. We're not gonna worry about external components. We actually have more internal components to set up, which is proxy, first of all. So I'm gonna create a component over here, component, just like that. We're gonna have a domain of proxy.densheet.org and the module will be proxy65. Now you don't really have to configure this. It's only a feature that lets certain mobile phones and stuff connect to your XMPP server and I think anything on the network with it. In all honesty, I'm not 100% sure why you need a separate subdomain for this, but that is the XMPP standard. So you just have to create this basically. The last one I'm gonna create is the PubSub component. So component, quote, pubsub.densheet.org, whatever your subdomain is, and then the module is just called pubsub. So you can configure this further, and I'm not gonna cover it in today's video, but you can actually add modules to this, which let you sync RSS feeds to pubsub feeds. Pubsub feeds are basically the XMPP version of RSS, like news feeds. It's basically letting you receive the news through messages and a bunch of stuff like that. We're not gonna be doing that in today's video. That's it's a lot of advanced, it's a lot of advanced stuff. We might cover it in a future video, but in short, know that for the purposes of compatibility, you might want to have this feature enabled since it, it can be rather useful. All right, so that's pretty much all the component configuration finished. The components are all set. The one thing we do need are certificates. So certificates allow your server to have an encrypted communication transport layer. I'd say that's pretty important. So to install that stuff, we're gonna begin by installing a library. We actually need to import them. So we're gonna run apt install lua-unbound, just like that. So just let it install and it'll do it. All right, we're good. Now that it's installed that, we're gonna want certbot. If you don't already have that installed, you can run apt install python3 dash certbot uh, dash nginx. So this will install a tool which allows us to get certificates for our domains, just in case you don't already have it. Now that we've installed it, we're gonna run a, a couple of commands to actually get the certificates. So you wanna run certbot dash d, then the domain you want the command for, or the domain you want the certificate for, denshi.org, and then dash dash nginx to make sure it doesn't conflict with nginx. So I'm not gonna run this because I actually already have all the domains, but essentially you wanna run this command and the same thing for all your subdomains. So we would do it for share.denshi.org. We would run it for, um, you know, proxy.denshi.org. So you basically run it and it will automatically set up the certificate for you. As you can see, I already have it. It's just asking me to attempt to reinstall it or renew and replace it. If I put renew and replace, it will actually start downloading the certificate and it might throw up an error. There you go, it'll throw up an error because I don't have it deployed in Nginx. That's because I don't have a website set for that specific domain, but it doesn't matter because I don't want to have a website on it. So you can ignore that error. Anyways, if you check the folder Etsy Let's Encrypt Live after running all of these certbot commands to obtain your domains for all the subdomains you want, you'll notice that they're all in here. So I got denshi.org, muc.denshi.org, proxy, pubsub, share, everything is there. So just make sure they're here. And then you can run prosody ctl, which is a tool which lets you interact with your prosody server directly from the command line, dash dash root for root permissions, cert import, and then a directory, etsy, let's encrypt live. So this will import the certificates straight into Prosody. As you can see, it says important certificate and key for all the different hosts. And there you go, you should be good once it's done that. So now that you set up the certificates, we're gonna look at some other modules and little features and like little trinket stuff that we might wanna enable for the purposes of having our server be as compatible and featureful as possible. The first thing we wanna do is Bosch and WebSockets. In short, this feature lets our server interact with web-based HTTP clients, which, you know, some XMPP clients need that. So for the purposes of compatibility, we're gonna enable those. Begin by installing the Lua-Bytop library. So just make sure that's installed. And then go into Etsy, Prosody, prosody.cfg.lua. 
and scroll up all the way, all the way up to the modules. And you'll notice that down here, there's actually a module called Bosch. Make sure you uncomment that and a module called WebSocket. So make sure you uncomment that as well. So, all right, just like that, you've enabled that. We've also got tombstones and mimicking. These are security measures to stop people from actually creating spoofed addresses and registering accounts for deleted users. If your server is open to registration, I recommend uncommenting these. In general, you should probably just go through here and uncomment anything you want, like server contact info and that, that kind of stuff. I think we actually need this for the contact info, so I'm gonna make sure to uncomment that. I might wanna add that to the text guide. But yeah, I'm gonna uncomment tombstones and I'm also gonna uncomment mimicking just to make sure all that's enabled. And you also want to uncomment Proxy65. It allows for more proxy things to pass through your server. This module will allow proxies to pass through your main domain, which might help in certain situations. So just make sure you have this uncommented. S2S bi-directional. This, I guess you could enable this. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, this might help with some stuff with syncing over group chats and whatnot, if I remember correctly. Anyways, that's pretty much it when it comes to main modules. In this, um, guide, I talk about community modules. I'm not going to be installing these in today's video because for that we'd have to install Lua Rocks, which on this current version of Debian messes up a bunch of stuff with the Lua libraries and whatnot, and it's just super hard to deal with. So I'm not going to do it in today's video. I might do it in a future video when I talk about community modules and PubSub and stuff like that, which is when I mentioned that whole RSS syncing thing. So if you guys want to see that, if you guys want to see me install community modules, things like push notifications for iOS and whatnot, please let me know and I'll make a whole video about community modules and things that you can have on Prosody because there are some pretty interesting ones and they keep adding new ones. We're going to want to go to um, creating users admins manually over here. So now that our server is basically set up, all we have to do is create the users that are actually going to use it. So I'm going to close the configuration file over there by writing and quitting and I'm going to run Prosody ctl add user and i create a user called test at denshi.org so just like that it will prompt me for a password i'm going to put um i don't know one two three four is my password obviously you want to change this at some point but that's the password i'm going to use now and now if we open up an xmpp client we should be able to start messaging once we restarted prosody obviously so i'm going to run system ctl restart prosody and you can run tail-f var log prosody prosody dot log and it should show you that everything is functioning well. So it says serving Bosch, serving WebSocket, certificates loaded, whatnot. Okay, that's looking good. So our logs are looking good. I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller so we can see them in the future. And now I'm gonna open my XMPP client. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using an XMPP client called Gajim. As you can see, when you open Gajim, you get a welcome prompt to put your user in. I'm gonna put my username in, test at densheet.org, and I'm gonna put the password set for him, one, two, three, four. So clicking login like that, it will connect the server as you can see it's showing in the log that we're connecting to the server outstanding uh, and it's giving me an account name and stuff i'm just going to call this test account it doesn't really matter since this is not published this is just for Kashim. and there you go it appears that i'm connecting once this turns green there you go it's green so i'm connected just like that all right so now if you go to accounts and you go to server info and you go to connection and certificate and everything, you should be able to check all your service features. As you can see, it's got pretty much everything. Uh, I think security labels is an old feature. You don't really have to care about that. Certificates are looking good. Connection is looking good. Service is looking fine. You got the contact addresses. Look, they're right there. So hey, if there's any abuse on the server, I can contact Alex. There you go. And if you go to accounts and uh, I think discover services, you can actually see all the different modules we enabled. So as you can see, there's muck.dentry.org for chat rooms, uh, there's share.dentry.org for file upload, there's pubsub over there, and socks. You can actually give a custom name to any component you want just by having a name variable under it. So I'm gonna call this, I don't know, uh, Denshi's super cool file sharing service with an exclamation mark. And I'm gonna call my proxy Denshi's hyper awesome proxy with an exclamation. And my pub sub, I can call it Denshi's super cool pub sub component, just like that. And maybe for the group chats, you could call those name is equal to Denshi's chat rooms, just like that. So now if I go in here and I run systemctl restart prosody, 
It'll actually disconnect me on Gajim, as you can see it went back to blue, but it will go back to green in just a second, and I can actually close this one. There you go, it's back to green. And if I go to accounts and I click discover services, as you can see, it's got Denshi's chat rooms, Denshi's hyper awesome procs, it's got all my custom names. I just thought that was like a fun thing that we could have looked at. But yeah, that was setting up your own Prosody server. Now that you have your XMPB client, whether that be Gajim, Movem, Conversations on Android, I think there's one named Siskin and Monal on iOS, those kind of clients. All you got to do is sign in with your account and you'll be good. So yeah, I've been Denshi. This has been a comfy guide to Prosody, an XMPP server written in Lua. Goodbye.